Hey guys, it's Nicola, welcome back today. I'm gonna to be sharing my favorite books of 2015. I have two novels, one short story collection, two essay collections, and two general non-fiction books. So I have about eight in total to tell you about. Let's start with fiction, shall we? My first favorite of the year was Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. This is a novel which was written in Spanish, translated into English, it's published by And Other Stories in the UK, and it was translated by Lisa Dillman. I think she did an excellent job. This book is about a girl who is tasked with crossing the border from Mexico to the US to find her brother. It's never really explicitly stated that um, those are the countries involved, but it's very concerned with border crossings and identity and what it's like to be an outsider. And I also saw Yuri Herrera at the Edinburgh Book Festival. I did a recording of that event actually, so I will put a link to that in the description as well. I loved the language in this book. I liked the kind of odyssey of it, even though it's a really short book. It's only about 120 pages or something like that. I found the main character really vibrant, really surprising. I thought she was a great female protagonist. It's a very unusual set of circumstances that he puts his characters into and very unusual way that he places them in terms of how he describes them in the narrative. So I don't know if I'm doing a very good job of explaining it, but this was just really unique style and vision for a novel and I loved it. And his next book is coming out in July and I really cannot wait. My other favourite novel this year was Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. This was a big release, a lot of people have talked about it. I'm afraid that it may be getting a bit too overhyped for people who are coming to it a bit later, but I loved it. I thought it was really beautifully written. I loved the this, this style and the arc. Um, it's less about plot and more about character development, which I think is more unusual than it ought to be. It's about a couple called Lotto and Matilde, and they are kind of a fantasy couple. They are creative people and they have like that kind of like boho New York lifestyle. The first half of the book is not narrated by Lotto but it centres around Lotto and then the second half is centres around Matilde and the second half is in many ways a massive deconstruction of the first half so um, I've heard a lot of people say and I would agree with them that the second half of the book really takes off where the first half could be a little bit slow so do take your time with it if you do read it and um, I would say just like don't get caught up in the hype, uh, prepare for it to be a bit slow and at points quite frustrating but like if you're a literary person and you enjoy books with like like big characters and big character changes then I think that you'll enjoy this one. I certainly enjoyed it and I also wrote a full review for The Big Issue magazine so I'll link that below if you're interested in reading it. My favourite short story collection of the year was one that I've talked about before, it's Bream Gives Me Hiccups by Jesse Eisenberg. This was a big surprise for me, I saw it on NetGalley and I was like alright Jesse let's see what you can do and he totally delivered so I don't want to talk about it too much. I talked about it in my 5 books to make you lol video and I also talked about it in my best of 2015 so far so I'll link those videos so that you can hear more about it there. Next up essay collections, you know that I love my essays. My first favourite is The Unspeakable by Megan Dom. I talked about this quite recently as well and I think I talked about it in my November wrap up. I'm not entirely sure but I'll put a link below. Um, basically these are personal essays, she writes about things that most other writers would probably shy away from. She talked about um, her mother's death and the way that she was expected to act versus how she wanted to act and all the kind of frustrations and things that people wouldn't be aware of um, from the outside and so she takes it from the inside looking outwards and I just I love what she has to say. I identified a lot with much of it and I found that there were a lot of experiences in here that were described that I related to that I hadn't heard elsewhere before so I think it was just like quite edifying for me. There are a few duds in here as there are with any essay collection but more hits than misses for me and I really love this one. Another essay favourite for me this year is Notes from No Man's Land by Yola Biss. I read this really late in the year. I have tabbed it to hell because I really loved it. Um, she takes a really wide view on some topics and really personal view on others. Sometimes she combines the two of them. Sometimes you have big surprises right in the middle of an essay. Sometimes it's just kind of like a provocation. So she's a really interesting thinker. She comes at things from different angles. There are also notes in the back where she discusses like how she came about ideas and what her aims were with essays, which is not something that I've seen before. And I really like that. 
This reminded me at some points of Leslie Jimison's work as well, so if you've read the Empathy Exams then I definitely recommend this one. This is also published by Rule of Press. I think they're doing amazing things and you should check it out. And finally I have two general non-fiction favourites. The first is Between the World and Me by ta Coates. This was a big release this year also. It was actually released sooner um, in the publishing calendar than it was supposed to be because of the Black Lives Matter movement and how much discussion was going, around, going on around that. And um, I listened to this on audiobook because ta Coates narrates this himself and he talked a lot about like the, the meter and the language and, and the, the kind of the, the rhythm of the language a lot um, and all the press I've been reading and hearing about it. So I decided to give it a shot on audiobook. It's only about three hours long. It's a difficult lesson but a really interesting one. It's written in this form of a letter to his son and it's about race, race relations in the US and what it's like to be a black man in America. Um, there's been a bit of discussion about like black women's experience. Um, I think that he was right to stick to what he knew in this case and I think he does give he does give a bit of a an insight into like how the women around him felt and reacted to certain situations. Um, but yeah, it's a really short book and I think it's a really valuable viewpoint and I think that you should read it. And my last favourite is Spinster by Kate Bollock. I think that a lot of people would find this book really fucking annoying uh, but it came to me at the right time and it was exactly what I was looking for. Um, basically it's a kind of memoir um, she talks about being a single woman, which wasn't necessarily what I went into it for, but she also writes about her five, what she calls awakeners, who are five female authors who were mostly living in New York or the northeast of the States. Um, they were all writers, they were all single for significant portions of their life, and she also peppers in some women's history, so she gives a lot of critical context around these women in their lives and their writing and the environments that produced all of that. So I just thought it was a really nicely rounded piece of work um, between the personal, the contextual history and just like celebrating the authors that she loves. Um, like I said, it's quite self-indulgent and I know that that has bothered other people but I was ready for it so I didn't really mind personally and if you are interested in that sort of thing then I think you should give it a go. That's it for all my favourite books of 2015. Thank you for playing along. <laughs> Let me know if you've read any of these or if you, I have convinced you to read any of these. I would really like to know and if you have any questions about them then just leave them in a the comment below and we will chat. I'll be back very soon with a wrap up of my reading year with some more information about how many books I read, how I did and my goals for 2016 and that sort of thing. In the meantime I hope you are having a good and happy new year and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye bye.